it's, uh, we're really excited about uh, bringing a new opportunity to uh, Christchurch. Obviously when we uh, take on demolition projects there's a lot of um, options available to us like cut and crane and um, uh, high reach demolition things and it takes a lot to um, a lot of things to be aligned to get an implosion underway and fortunately for, for us uh, the Radio Network House has given us that opportunity so um, we've uh, got involved with uh, Ceres to uh, bring that technology to uh, New Zealand and uh, we're really pleased that um, we're working with the guys to, to do that so I'll hand you over to Bill Johnson uh, who's going to go through the uh, more technical side of it. Uh, first I want to thank uh, Pete and the Nailer Love team for partnering with us on this project and some other significant uh, tall building demolitions around uh, Christchurch including NZI Radio House and the BDO Spicers Lumley. Whenever you're taking on these challenging uh, demolitions where you've got buildings that are already damaged it's uh, very reassuring to partner with a company with 100 years of experience in New Zealand uh, in the construction industry. Uh, secondly I'd like to thank Warwick Isaac and his team at Sarah they are playing an invaluable role in how they are managing the operations of the, uh, the demolition operation oversight here in the Christchurch area. When you have uh, the number of demolitions going on, the number of people working in challenged buildings, uh, earthquake compromised buildings, it is outstanding to be able to have uh, such a great team to review health and safety plans, demolition methodologies, and to make sure we run the safest possible uh, demolition and disaster recovery operations possible. So that has been uh, tremendously helpful having him here uh, or and his team help us. The other thing is I want to thank Greg Hedges. I thought he was going to be here today. Greg is the building owner and he has placed a lot of faith and confidence in us and just wanted to uh, say thanks to him for that uh, trust and letting us uh, implode his, uh, his building here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Controlled Demolition Inc. They are actually the subcontractor that is going to be performing uh, the implosion. Uh, most of you, if you've done any kind of research at all, realize they are uh, world leaders, uh, world-renowned leaders in imploding buildings. They have more than 9,000 buildings uh, that they have imploded uh, to date. They have set a number of world records, including uh, the tallest structures uh, ever built in, I hate to read this, but I can't remember them all, but let's see, the US, uh, US CG Tower in Painesville, Liberia, 433 meters, the tallest man-made structure ever imploded. The Seattle Kingdom, the largest structure ever imploded at 19.8 million cubic meters. Uh, the J.D. Hudson Department Store at 135 meters tall is the tallest building ever imploded. And Villa Pan America is the most building shot in uh, a single implosion. So with that kind of track record to do the first ever implosion here in uh, New Zealand, we wanted to bring the top talent in uh, to provide the safest possible methodology and we believe CDI is that, uh, is that company. Uh, they'll be joining us a little later in the month uh, when we finish prepping the building uh, to actually set the charges and do the implosion. I'm going to talk just a minute about what the sequence is going to be like. Uh, we are right now stripping uh, the interior of the building. We want to get it as clean as possible with the uh, jib board, carpets, uh, duct work, things like that. So really all we're going to have is a concrete uh, structure left. Uh, they will then come in uh, and start drilling holes in the columns, place the charges in the columns, and then set it off at a sequence uh, that uh, will commence hopefully on the morning of August 5th. It'll be about 60 kilograms of explosive material and it'll be an emulsion type explosive. And then there's another 6 kg of, of blasting detonating core to go with that. So actually a very small amount of explosives for um, the size of the building. There actually is going to be a minimal amount of shaking that goes on with the building. Uh, there's some misconceptions about that when a building is imploded, how much actual vibration there is. But what you really need to understand is uh, the building itself is calculated to weigh about 6,600 metric tons. An implosion is not like dropping 6,600 metric tons on the ground all at once. What happens is as the implosion progresses, it weakens various levels of the building and you have the top levels their fall is actually broken by crunching up the lower levels so a lot of the energy is actually absorbed by the material in the rest of the building so very limited my vibrations from from Sarah's point of view we are we're very happy to work with 11 series on, on this job our role has simply been to review the um, the methodology to make sure that we're satisfied that it provides a safe 
uh, methodology for, for demolition and uh, we're very excited that what it does now is allow the demolition of this building at, at a much more quicker fashion than what it otherwise would have come down. So from our point of view what that does is expedite the recovery of the central city and helps us move on with, with the rebuild uh, more quickly. G given this building behind us is more of an economic decision as opposed to damage, um, my understanding is that the damaged buildings are much more difficult to bring down, down by implosion because they don't quite know how they'll react. And so this is a good example behind us of where they know how it will react, the damage is not to the degree that it's um, critically damaged the structural elements, it's just overall damage and so um, I, I'm not surprised that we haven't really seen too many so far. Uh, who's going to be pushing the button? <laughs> well we, we actually uh, had debated that and we're trying to sort that out right now. We've had different requests to auction the pushing of the button off and have the money go to um, Heritage Building Fund or to support uh, uh, some other nice charities around here. So we're, we're trying to sort through the liability of that. So we'll, we'll come back to you on that. Um, yeah.